Sure, it might be holding you down to the surface of the planet, but it might not be holding the universe together. Everything we've been spoon-fed about gravity may just be a good bedtime story. Does that mean I can fly? First off, there's this thing called the three-body model. You see, most astronomy is based on the simple assumption of gravitational attraction that two big bodies are attracted to each other based on the inverse square of the distance and a gravitational constant. No, it really is simple. It's one over the distance squared and a constant. Okay, that doesn't, it is simple. Just you have to trust me. It works great for things like falling feathers and bowling balls, assuming there's no air resistance. Just a minor detail. We can use that math on our calculating super brains to figure out exactly how, through gravity, the two-body model works. Two bodies means something like the Earth and the Moon revolving around it. But the minute you throw in a third body, like the Sun, everything goes flying apart. Whee! Or crashing together. Newton, you failed us! Oh, the math just doesn't work. And Jupiter's got 63 moons. Uh-oh. A while ago I read an apologist paper on the three-body dilemma that claims that the math becomes very complicated when there are more than two bodies involved. Three vectors per object, three objects, nine vectors. That doesn't really sound that complicated. So the question is, why doesn't the three-body model work? I don't know, and neither do they. But I do know this. In science, the simplest or most elegant answer is usually considered the right one. Enter electromagnetism. Space, as it turns out, is not an empty void like we thought it was. It's absolutely chock full of electromagnetic particles, and all that charged material moving around creates electromagnetic fields. Most of the stuff you see in the night sky, like suns and nebulas, are made up of plasma, which is superheated gas and has some very strange properties, like the fact that it conducts electricity. Because of that, plasma reacts to and can actually even create magnetic fields. It's quite possible that gravity didn't form the universe. Electricity did. Now before you shout at your computer in outrage and disgust, remember, that's what the Catholic bishops did to Galileo. The guys that thought this up have some compelling videos online. Watch them with an open mind, like a real scientist, and see what you think. I started giggling when they showed the hourglass nebula and suggested that maybe electromagnetism had something to do with its formation. We link some videos on our website below. Start off with the first one, it's a short clip about the sun. If you like it, move on to the big one. Now I'm not saying that electromagnetics formed the universe. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. All I'm saying is it's an interesting possibility. But from what I've seen so far, their theories are very compelling. That's it, that's the end. Gravity may not be the answer, but you still can't fly.